Hi guys, I'm Gary from Alpha, Renewable Product Specialist. Today we're going to talk about the E-Tech Hybrid with a 33 kilowatt combi boiler alongside the 4 kilowatt heat pump. So up to now we've put our live neutral and earth into the boiler, we've fed the live neutral and earth into the heat pump itself and then we've connected the heat pump to the boiler by the, the receiver. So we've put D plus and D minus into the receiver, D plus and D minus into the heat pump itself. Uh, so we're going to talk about the actual controller itself today and how to commission it and also about common faults that we're going to find as well. So when you first get the controller, it will be set in a boiler only mode. This controller will do boiler, it'll do full heat pump systems and it will also do hybrid systems. So now we need to make sure that the smart tech controller is connected up to both the heat pump and the boiler. We know if it's connected because you'll have an outdoor temperature on the left hand side. If it's not connected, what you need to do is take the controller off the stand. We then need to remove the battery, put the battery back into the controller, and then once it starts to load, you'll get an A on the screen. Once you see the A, if you press in and hold, you'll get a little dot that appears in the bottom hand corner. Once you get the dot, if you let go, press in and hold again, you'll then see hybrid that comes up on the screen. Once you see hybrid, if you give it a single click, it is now connecting up to both the heat pump and the boiler. You will also notice that it says disconnected on the top of the screen at the moment. It may say that for five to 10 minutes until the system gets connected. Once we've lost that disconnected and we get a time and date on the top, top of the screen, we will also get an outdoor temperature on the left hand side of the screen. Then we know that the heat pump and the boiler and the controller are all connected together. So now we know we're connected up to the heat pump and the boiler because we've got the outdoor temperature on the left hand side. We also know there's no faults on the system because we have a date and a time on the top of the screen. Now we need to get into the commissioning settings on the controller. So to do this, if we press in and hold on the screen, we'll then get into the main menu. Once we're in the main menu, we then need to find settings. Once you find settings, if you give it a single click, then scroll around until you see thermostat. Within thermostat, we can then change the hot water temperature. So the hot water temperature here is set to 45 degrees, which is perfect for a shower. If the customer has got a bath, we then need to change that to 60 degrees. So if we highlight the 45, turn it round until it says 60, give it another single click to confirm, and that is a hot water set. We also need to set the temperature for the heating system. To do this, we then need to find curve in the settings. If we click into curve, one thing you will notice here, default, the curve is turned off in the top left hand corner. We also need to make sure this is turned on. So if you highlight off, turn it until it says on, and then give a single click to confirm. So now we've got the curve turned on in the top left hand corner, we also need to set the flow temperatures. So along the left hand side, you can see here we've got 78 and 35. Now if we were going to put it on an existing radiating system, our recommended settings would be to take it the maximum flow temperature to 60 degrees and take the minimum temperature to 40 degrees. So once again, it's just a single click just to confirm them setting changes. So also there is across the bottom the external design conditions. So on here, you would select the minimum temperature to where your design conditions are within the UK. So around here, we would be minus three. So I'm gonna change that to minus three. Again, just a single click just to confirm your maximum outdoor conditions, we usually say this is where you would start to turn your heating system off. So on this system, we've set it to 21 degrees. So now the flow temperatures are set. We've now got 60 degrees as our maximum flow, 40 degrees as our minimum flow, and now we've also got our external temperature set as well. So now the system at minus three degrees outside will be giving the customer a flow temperature of 60 degrees. At 21 degrees, it will only be giving the customer a flow of 40 degrees. Anywhere in between that, it will pick it off the graph and give the corresponding flow temperature. So once you've put in your hot water and your heating temperatures, you also need to tell the controller how much you're paying for your hot water and your heating. So the system can figure out which is going to be the cheapest appliance to run, whether it be the boiler or the heat pump. So to do this, if we press the back arrow into the, back, the last menu, we then need to find the diagnostics, but before clicking into diagnostics, we then need to press in and hold to get a dot. Once we have the dot, if we let go, press in and hold again to get an OK. Once we get the OK, if we give it a single click, that now takes us into our engineer's menu. Once we're in the engineer's menu, if we click on the one to five at the bottom, that takes us onto the next page. On the second page, you will find the gas and the electric 
per kilowatt hour of what the customer is paying. So now you'll notice we have F1, F2 and F3 on the controller. F1 would be from midnight till 8 o'clock. F2 would be from 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock. F3 would be from 4 o'clock back to midnight. P gas would be how much the customer is paying per kilowatt hour for the gas. So if the customer is paying the same rate throughout the day for the gas and the electric, F1 and F2 and F3 would all be the same and P gas would be the, the rate for the gas per kilowatt hour. So now we're on the final page. There is also the glycol setting on the top. We do also need to make sure that that glycol setting is turned on. So once again, if you click on the off, select on and a single click to confirm. 